Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at custom actions. Now I know custom actions aren't necessarily anything new from a CRM perspective. They were released with 2013, but I still get a lot of questions about, you know, what are they? How do they work? How would I, you know, why would I use them versus some of the other situations and, and items that you would be looking at? And, you know, the nice thing about custom actions is they give you a way to really compose business logic directly from within the platform, as opposed to having to go in and create a plugin to go ahead and work with that. So from an action perspective, I can now do things like, you know, create a record, update a record, delete a record, or even perform some type of, you know, specific action within the application itself. The nice thing about the actions themselves is they're driven by a process or a behavior rather than what you're specifically doing within an entity itself. And so it gives you the capabilities to really kind of do whatever you want. Now, the nice thing about it is once an action is created, you know, developers can still create code that is, is executed from this custom action. So it is defining a message basically in the application that a plugin can subscribe to, and then they can invoke some of that information based upon those items. But the nice thing about it is the business logic doesn't have to be coded into the actual plugin itself. The business logic can be coded into the custom, uh, built into the custom action. And so then that way, if somebody makes a change or update something, you can actually do that within the actual application and then work with information from there. Now, the other thing that's nice about a custom action is with the update of 2015, they actually went out and they gave you the capabilities to execute custom actions with, through workflows and through dialogues and, and be able to actually perform them as a workflow operation. So today what we want to do is just kind of talk a little bit about, you know, how do you create them? You know, where might you use them? Show you some of the logic behind them. And then in a future video, we'll actually take you in and we'll show you how to, you know, run it from a workflow and, and maybe even how you can, you know, execute or, or add a plug into it to subscribe some of that logic moving forward. So before we go in and actually create the custom action, why don't we go ahead and just, I'm going to show you just a little bit of what we're kind of hoping to accomplish. So I have a preferred customer program that I enroll people in based upon certain criteria. And so we added a, ta or a, a section to this form called preferred customer program. And I've got three fields that I just really just pulled off the account entity, the credit limit, uh, credit hold and relationship type field or the customer type code field. And then I added a custom field uh, called preferred customer, which is basically just a two option field uh, that I can use to actually set it and determine whether or not they're going to be a preferred customer within the application. So the point being is if any customer or any account has a credit hold on their account, they cannot be considered a preferred customer. However, if they don't have a credit hold on their account and their credit limit is higher than $10,000 and they are in the database as a customer, then they can be set as a preferred customer. Um, or if they are a vendor, a partner, or a reseller, they can also be determined as a uh, preferred customer, regardless of what their credit limit is. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to just create a custom action that's going to allow us to kind of capture that information. And so I'm going to go into processes and we're going to define a new process. So I'll go ahead and click on new. And in here, I'm just going to call this preferred customer. I'm going to make this an action. Now I could specify it as an entity, but I also can specify it without an entity. So I can make it uh, basically global if need be. And that's nice, particularly if you want the flexibility to be able to, you know, pull this in from, from multiple entities, you know, you could, so you could, you know, we're going to have pretty account specific functionality here, but if you think about it from orders, you know, and invoices and opportunities, you may have situations where, you know, orders or, or opportunities over $10,000 that, are not associated with a customer that has a credit hold might actually require approval. And so you could use this to approve those particular items and you, if you make it non-entity specific, you have the flexibility to work with multiple entities and actually have a transfer across, which is one nice advantage over per se, like a workflow where you would really have to be locked into a specific entity. And so now I can go ahead and kind of build out my criteria. And so it's going to be activated as a process. It's going to be enabled for rollback in case there's an issue. So now I just really need to define out what my input and output parameters are going to be. So ultimately, I need to know if there's a credit hold. I need to know what their 
credit limit is, and I need to know what their relationship type view is. So I'm going to go ahead and add a parameter. I'm going to call this credit hold. Make it a Boolean field since it's a yes, no field. I'm going to make it required. And as far as the direction, I'm going to make it an input parameter. And I'll just wipe out the description for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a new one. And in this particular one, we're going to call this credit limit. And since it's a monetary value, we'll set this to money. And then we'll go ahead and again, make it required and as an input parameter. And then the last one that we'll go ahead and do is going to be the relationship type field. Now, this one is obviously an option set in the application. I'm just going to store it as a string value just so it's easier to work with and, and kind of play with from those situations so I can be more focused on the numeric values. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it as a string value. Again, I'll make it required as well as an input parameter and then I'll wipe out my description. So I've got my input parameters and you can have input parameters, you can have output parameters, you just, an item as you can see cannot be both. It has to be either signified as an input parameter or an output parameter in the application. Now I'm going to go ahead and define my output parameter and in this case it's going to be preferred customer and it's going to be a boolean and it's going to be a output parameter and then I can go ahead and now start designing the rest of my item. So now you'll see that after I've kind of set up, you know, the specific input and output parameters that I need for the item, now I have the capabilities to start actually building the conditions and the actions around the, the custom action itself. And this uses a very similar um, editor than to what you would see within like a workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to add step. And you'll notice I have a lot of the same particular options here that I have. I have a few different you know, options that are grayed out just based upon the fact that they aren't necessarily entity specific or that I don't have a specific record type selected at this point. Um, so I have some, very, you know, some, some generalized options at this point, but we're going to go ahead and choose check condition. And so when the condition comes up, basically the first thing that I need to know is do they have a credit hold on their account? So we'll just say check credit hold. I'm going to click in my condition to configure it. Now, being that this particular action was not associated with an entity per se, I don't have a lot of options here. I really can only pull information from the process itself or from specific arguments that are defined for the process. If I had defined this as a custom action on a specific entity per se, like the account entity, then this would look very familiar or very similar to like an advanced find scenario where I would have the entity and then all the related entities underneath it, as well as the local values to choose from. In this case we'll just go ahead and choose arguments we're checking to see if the credit hold is in place so we'll say if credit hold equals one and then we'll go ahead and save and close and so now if they have a credit hold on their account they cannot be a preferred customer so now I'm going to go into here and I'm going to click to add a step and I'll click on add step and in here you'll see I'm going to assign a value and I'm basically just assigning a value to that uh, particular field that we created. So I'm going to call this set not preferred. I'm going to hit set properties. And this one, I actually set the default value to false already, so I don't really have to do anything. You'll notice being that this is defining an output parameter. This was the only item that we actually defined as an output parameter when we created the custom action. So that's the only one available. So I'll just hit save and close. And then I would just continue to build out my conditions based upon, you know, what my specific needs are. So now I would select in here, go up to add stamp choose conditional branch, and then build out the remaining part of my conditions. Now, just from a time frame perspective, I'll go ahead and just kind of complete this here real quick. We'll, uh, and then we'll come back and you'll see what the, the finished product looks like, and then we'll explain it from there. So here's my completed statement for the custom action. So 
first checking to see if they have a credit hold. So if the credit hold status is true, then I am setting the preferred customer field to false so or, or not preferred. Um, then I'm checking to see if they have a credit limit of more than $10,000 and if the relationship type field equals three. <clears throat> which basically means customer, then I am setting the preferred customer field to true or that they are a preferred customer. Then, I'm, otherwise, then I'm checking to see if the relationship type field is set to either five, nine, or 11, which basically constitutes um, vendor, uh, reseller, and supplier, uh, which, which then uh, allows us to go ahead and set them as a preferred customer as well. And then otherwise, if none of that information is true, then we're simply just going in and not setting them as a preferred customer. And so those are the scenarios. We've got our input and output parameters, we have our conditions, and we have our specific actions that are based upon those conditions. So now I'm ready to go ahead and activate this. Now, once it's activated, now it's able to start consuming within the application. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we could do this. The first one would be kind of in your traditional, you know, executing it through a plugin. So basically having code in a plugin that executes it or through a custom workflow activity that you're calling. Um, basically, another option would be to go in and do it through a command placed in a JavaScript that's running within the JavaScript uh, functionality. Um, or basically any scenario where I could work with web services, I could initiate it from there as well. Now, the other option that you would have is to call it from a workflow or a dialogue and that's actually what we will do show you how to do in the next video is now that we have this created we'll go ahead and actually call it from a workflow or a dialogue so that's how you can go ahead and create a basic custom action that you can use for a variety of different tasks within the application you know again the nice thing about this is you can build this all through within the application UI. And so and it is very declarative. So if anything ever changes, maybe we change our criteria or you know whatever the situation is, we have the capabilities to come back in here and make those changes, uh, whether we're a developer or a non-developer, because it's all done within the application UI. Now in the next video, like I said, we'll take you in and we'll show you how to actually consume this via like a workflow or a, or a dialogue and work with information from there. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek. And I just want to say thank you guys very much. Take care and have a good one.